let's take a look now at the safety and the history of ketosis. If restricting carbohydrates makes such good scientific sense, why isn't everybody doing this? Some people may wonder, this is so different from the standard of care. Is this safe and effective for me in the long term? Believe it or not, many cultures in the world have eaten this way for centuries. One of them is the Maasai in Africa, and they were actually studied. And what did they find? They found that in these people, their cardiovascular disease rates were incredibly low, despite the fact that the majority of what they were eating was fat, actually saturated fat and their cholesterol levels, surprising to so many, were low as well. Another culture that's eaten this way is the Inuits. They've eaten a low-carb, high-fat diet for centuries. And again, what we find is an almost complete absence of type 2 diabetes and even incredibly low cancer rates. Let's look at the history of a ketogenic diet in this country. Remember, we didn't always have insulin and all these medications for diabetes. So what did we do to help people who had this disease before insulin injections became available? The father of diabetes treatment is considered Dr. Joselin. Dr. Joselin started treating patients with type 2 diabetes before we had insulin injections. And what was his treatment of choice? He treated people with a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. And an interesting thing is, one of the first people that he treated, whose life he saved, was his own mother with this method. This is how we used to approach this disease. We got off track when we had so many medications that seemed like they might be easier. But we now have to go back and ask ourselves, are they? Or did we know a lot back then? Something many people don't realize is that a ketogenic diet is used as a treatment for epilepsy in children when medications either stop working or are no longer tolerated. This has actually been used for over a hundred years. So the medical community deems this to be safe to be used in growing children. And a clinical study has looked at the growth and development of children treated with a ketogenic diet for epilepsy and have found that they grow and develop normally. So this approach is used even in children. Another question may be, what if I'm really active? What if I'm an athlete? Will this negatively impact my athletic ability? And the answer to that is actually no. And our recent studies and evidence of successful endurance winners are that a low-carb, high-fat diet can actually improve, specifically, endurance performance. Endurance athletes who are following a ketogenic diet much more effectively burn fat. And fat is an excellent source of fuel for exercising muscles as well. In fact, we've been seeing 100-mile course records being broken. And when you go to look at who's breaking them and you look at what they're eating, the interesting thing is these athletes are following a ketogenic diet, a low-carb, high-fat diet. As a board-certified lipidologist, one of the questions that I get from patients all the time is, what about my cholesterol? And this has actually been looked at in many clinical studies. What we find is very significant decreases in triglycerides, significant increases in HDL, or our good cholesterol. Together, triglycerides and HDL cholesterol, those are termed atherogenic dyslipidemia when they are out of range. Let's break that down. Atherogenic means causes heart disease. Dyslipidemia, disordered cholesterol, or lipids. So a low-carb, high-fat diet, as it turns out, is incredibly effective to improve atherogenic dyslipidemia, which is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease.
And we see the impact on LDL cholesterol in the clinical trials that have been done being pretty flat. So it either has no impact or a significant improvement on cholesterol. And that is really important to understand. What about doing this on your own? This is a question that we get a lot. Well, I'll just try a ketogenic diet on my own. I'll start restricting carbohydrates. And I'm here to tell you that if you have a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes or other health conditions and are on medications, do not do this without physician supervision. Why? It's not that the diet itself is dangerous. It's that if we combine two things to lower blood sugar or blood pressure, medication and a dietary change, it can be a double whammy and it can put you at great risk for blood sugar dropping too low or blood pressure dropping too low. We want everyone to be safe and that requires appropriate physician supervision who can adjust medications safely and effectively for you.